Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Tradewinds RV Center here to congratulate you on your purchase of your Jayco Melbourne 24L motorhome. You guys picked a really cool unit. I'm here to show you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A few things I want you to take into consideration. You do have your awning over here. And over on your off campsite, you're gonna have your big slide. Make sure nothing's going to impede that from coming out. Preferably nothing hanging directly over top of it. Uh, then, where your water and electricity connections are. These are going to be both toward the rear, behind your left rear tire on your driver's side or your off-camp side. It's going to be your power and your docking station. Now when you arrive, park accordingly so that you can utilize the facilities. Next thing you want to do is stabilize your unit. Now I recommend go ahead and hook up your power first because that way you can use your plugged in power to do everything here, slides and leveling jacks uh, and not use your house battery. So Furion's new attachment, 30 amp service. Simply line up the slots. Push it in, turn to lock. Once it's on, tighten this gray washer. Then plug your unit in. You do have 30 amp service, so you need to plug into a 110, and your convenience pack is this 30 to 110 adapter. Once you got your power on, we'll go ahead and stabilize your unit. Had to wait for the tractor to go by so you can hear me better. Now at your doorway, one thing I want to do is Recommend you be patient with this electric door coming out. Got power to the unit on. Now we're just gonna turn on the main power. Down here on the bottom is your equalizing system. Turn it on. Hit extend. See them automatically going down, it's gonna auto level your unit. Now if you don't turn it on, you have to manually just push them to go down. Unit's level. Just got our unit level. We're gonna go back out before applying slides and talk about hooking up your water. You see it's starting to snow here. So they made it real simple here. If you hooked up to city waters, if you hooked up to city fill tank, you hooked up to country fill, city set it at two and six. Set this one at two, this one at six. That's simple. If you just want to fill your tanks, one, one and six. If you're off camping, country fill, one and four. I mean, they made it real simple. So you're at a camp, you had a park. We're gonna set up for setting up at a park at two and six. First thing, water pressure regulator. I always use this water pressure regulator when putting water into your unit. It's gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines inside your unit. 
I always use this when hooking up. Open up our water up here. Hook up our water pressure regulator, hook up our hose, but don't turn our water on yet. We're gonna go over to your hot water heater. You could have did this beforehand, but just all we're gonna do at this point is return our drain plug. May have left it out from the last time we were camping. No rods, just your plug. Put your plug back in. I believe that's an inch and an eighth socket. Uh, put your plug back in, then you can turn on your hose. Hook up to city water, it starts filling up your tanks. It's gonna fill up your hot water heater. After a little while, you're gonna pull on this pressure release valve. It's gonna let air out of the lines and a little bit of water, and eventually you're gonna have a nice steady flow of water coming out of here. Don't worry about it harming any of these elements. This is what this is for. Once you have a steady flow of water coming out of there, that's when you know your hot water heater is full, and you can light your hot water heater from inside. I'll show you how to do that when we go in. Should you forget anything, Here's all your general information. So if you're not hooked up to city water, you're dry camping, we're gonna set it at one and four. Set this over to one, set this over to four. Again, using water pressure regulator. Fill up your tank in the same spot. However, once you fill up your potable water, that's when you're gonna to wanna to turn on your water pump. Right there, water pump's on, that's when you turn it on when you're dry docking and you just have your tanks filled. Sanitizing, same way. This is a black tank flush. This is your cable hookup. There's an outdoor shower. Light for in here. We'll talk about the black tank flush when dumping our tanks. Got our water hooked up, our electricity hooked up. Let me walk you around the unit, show you a few other things. There's where you'll dump your black tanks. Storage here with your uh, sewage hose and amperage reducer. Over here, more storage. And of course, your own generator. I'll start that up for you when we go inside. Here's your exhaust for the generator. Fueling. You have to open up your driver door. There's your flap for your diesel fuel. Will not open with your door closed like that. Go around over to your off campsite or to your campsite. You have that power step. This is your furnace heat release. So if your furnace is on, steer clear of this because it'll get rather warm. Here's your propane. Lefty Lucy to turn on. I'll, actually, I'll leave it a little open so I can show you how the stove works inside. There's your gauge to show you where you're at on it. Here's where you fill it. Over to the left of that. More storage. Your hot water heater again. This is access to the back of your fridge. That's access, or that's a hood vent for your microwave. Great place to store your sewage hose. Like your bumper. And your backup camera. Accessory hitch. Seven way connection. I think that about covers everything on the outside. Let's close this up. Go inside and deploy your slides. So as you come inside your unit, underneath here, remember how this latches, is your battery. To the left here is your awning in and out. I'm gonna run your awning out while I'm talking about other things and show you how far to run that out when you do. So above that is your house battery. 
Main power for all inside. Here's a power step on or off. Your awning light. Your equalizer system again. Now your awning's getting to where you need to be. So all you want to do is just bring it out until your lights are there and your flaps down to 90 degrees. As far as you want to bring that out. Bring that back in while I talk about your carbon monoxide detector. So this is your 12 volt carbon monoxide detector, which means it's always running off your house battery. So if you're not running down the road to charge your battery, you're not plugged into power, make sure if you're leaving for the day that you shut your main power off. Otherwise this will run your battery down. Bring your awning in the rest of the way here. Coming inside your unit. First thing I want to mention is where your fire extinguisher is. Make sure you and everyone that's camping with you knows that the fire extinguisher is by the entry doorway. Let's come up top here and turn some lights on. That's your control panel. Lights are down here. Stir your lights and show your lights. Close your door up. So up the top here, your generator. Here's your start and start, stop it. Let's start it up real quick. Turn the needle prime. It almost looks a little cold out there today. There it goes. I'm going to walk out real quick just to show you your generator running. Always be patient for that step to come out when you come outside. Sometimes it doesn't move as quickly as we do. Burn like a kitty. Come back inside and shut that off. Want to use up your gas. Just simply hit stop. So below that is your slide. We're gonna hit extend. Your big super slide, I like to call it. It's as long as a whole unit. Oh, well, that's running out. I'll talk about next to that. This is where you check all your levels, your battery, for all of your tanks. Keep an eye on them to be able to tell when those are full. Down here, water heater. To the left is where you start your, start up your water heater if you're hooked up to gas. To the right is where you turn on your water heater if you're hooked up to electricity. There's the, another spot to turn on the water pump if you're using potable water. And you do have pads on your tank, so if you're in inclement weather, you can turn on your tank heaters right there. Come around the unit. Good lighting. Close this door back up. Convection microwave. Turn this to light. You have to hand light your stove here. Furnace heat. Fridge. Really simple on the Nordic code. Turn the unit on. Mode. Right now it's on auto. Auto means that it's running off electricity. As soon as I unplug that electricity, it'll automatically go to gas if your gas is on. So there's auto, there's electricity, there's gas, there's auto. Temperatures go from one through five. So not so cold. And shut it off. You want to mention in your bedroom bathroom here light and fan if you want to reach up here and hand crank open your fan you can also turn it, shut it off so they can't be turned on from down there as well a little plumbing just to look at keep an eye on access is through there a little storage here 
trailer. Just keep an eye on your packs back there. Make sure your everything's staying secure. Slide is all the way out, so I can easily show you access panel to your breaker box and fuse box. Uh, looks like you have 15s and 30s in there. So I highly recommend grabbing a handful of those and having them with you when you go camping. Plug 10 plug there. Simply flip your mattress down. You have your lighting here. That's the storage. This is a mount for TV. This is a very solid one. Clips on. Take it on and off easily. Cable 110. You can control your slide in and out from back here. Just so you know. your cabinet here you, I showed you how to set the table up these will lock right down in here let's get that popped out you see there's three of them all lying in there turn to the right once it does it locks and then just twist this down table and set it up top. I'm not gonna set it there because your chairs are forward. I don't want to move them all on you. I think it's a better place to store than under the bed for those. You've got your cushions so that when your seats swivel around. So I'm showing your top bunk area here. Up here's your lighting. This is your antenna for your television system. All the way to the right is up. All the way to the left is down. Speaking of your TV, it is secured right now. That's not going nowhere, it's attached to the back. Pull forward on this. And release it. And then the whole thing can swivel up. See what you have here in this release? And pull forward on that. It's down up underneath it. It releases that, which connects onto here. So, when you fold this back in, no matter how you have it setting out here for yourself, when you fold it back in, make sure this goes to the back and this comes to the front, so that this will lock in there. Back there again. Make sure your cloth piece is reachable from underneath. And just push it back up against the wall. Locks itself right in. Keep your cloth out there to pull it away. So television is locked in. Speaking of your television, when you arrive at the campsite, before scanning for digital channels, press this button and make sure that green light is on. That's a digital channel enhancer. It's going to allow you to pick up more channels. Your smoke alarm. Change batteries as needed. Park well, covers everything on the inside. Everything in the Mercedes dash. I'm sure you understand. Manual. Extra keys. Everything is right inside this pouch. That'll be sitting there inside your glove box. Recliners. So we'll call these parachute pull. Pull up on them. Gives you a full chaise lounge. You do have to bring them back down with your feet. Storage here, more lighting up here, and your furnace. Simply set it at heat, fan, or air, and set it at the desired temperature. 
pretty much takes care of itself. If you just want to run a fan, you can do that over here. Do you have another exhaust fan here? Hand crank open. Several different speeds here. That about covers everything on the inside. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite and close everything up and put this ladder and everything away. So just as I would with a trailer, I shut off all the lighting inside. Keep your house battery from being ran down. Fold your bed up and make sure nothing's gonna hinder the slide. Make sure you haven't left anything on the flooring, in front of your seating, around the edges. Just make sure your slide's gonna come in safely. Should be coming up to the top. Get retract on the slide. Again, as you know, you do have to have the bed up. Do you have buckles? passengers that can safely ride along in the seating here keep TV going for them you can get to your fridge and microwave and everything going down the road as well as your bathroom got your slide all the way in and open up our door and come down here and we're gonna bring up your auto leveling system hit retract And up they go. Auto leveling system's coming up. Unless someone's going to be coming in and out of this door a lot, lock your door and deadbolt it. Come around here, release air from your lines, make sure that's full, and then pull your drain plug. Now we're going to head around. Unhook our power. Unhook our water. And head up to the dump station. Now at the dump station. We can take our sewage hose. And you're going to hook it up here. Now they do have bigger, longer, stronger ones in our store but these will suffice while you're there or even at your campsite low point drains open up all these drains it's clean water you can do it at the campsite before you head up to the dump station um, or at the dump station dump them all down simply turn the valves so straight up and down and they will open up drain all the water out of your lines hook up our sewage hose Pull our black tank handle. Now if this sounds like the black tank is no longer running, take our water pressure regulator and hook it up to our tank flush valve. Hook it up, hook the hose up, make sure your black tank is held open, and let that run for about five minutes. It's gonna wash out your black tank good for you. Get that all out of there. After you've waited, Unhook your hose, close your black tank. Then you can put your gray tank, that's gonna be your cleaner waters, your sinks and showers. It's gonna clean out your sewage hose for you. If you want. Make sure you got everything shut off in here. All of your lighting, close everything up. Take your sewage hose, put it right in there for sanitary keeping. Well, that about covers it, everything. I hope you guys enjoy this trailer for many years to come. If you like to say it, trade wins, happy camping.